This is world's most expensive date. Coming in at about $700 a kilogram or like $300 a pound. Except that you can't really buy a pound, you can only buy three. Yes, three individual ones. And that is because this is an ancient date that was like extinct for almost 2000 years, but recently scientists were able to resurrect it. And here we're looking at literally one of the first harvestings of these dates. But here's the question, how do they taste like? And are they even any good? Well, to answer this question, we're going to conduct a blind tasting experiment. We're going to take eight different dates, put them into cups with no names, and have people blindly taste them. Then we will record their reaction and see how many people will actually choose the resurrected Judean date. I feel like that one was still softer. I think I like number six the most out of it. Think number three? Well, I think I'll have three. But before we do this, we thought it would be important to head down to the Arava Institute where they grew these dates and talk to the doctor responsible for all of this. This will help us understand what this hype is all about and why these dates are so rare and expensive. The whole project is located at the very south end of Israel, only 30 minutes away from Eilat, the resort city of the Red Sea. It's only about five hours drive from Nazareth. But why are they located so far? At the south end of the country? Well, that's because it is an extremely dry climate here. Perfect for growing dates. So after five hours of driving, we finally make it to the destination, Kibbutz Keturah. And like any other kibbutz in Israel, we are welcomed by a yellow gate. So how many trees do you have now that are from the Judean date tree? Oh, we only have seven. Seven. <laughs> If you're liking this video so far, please take a moment to tap the like button on this video below because that tells YouTube algorithm to put this video in front of more people. And when that happens, that encourages us to produce more content like this. And as a thank you, here's a picture of Rhoda feeding sheep in Nazareth. Anyway, these are the trees that sprouted. We have one fertile female so far. We have two females <laughs> and five of them are male. <laughs> so. Okay. This is Dr. Lane Soloway. She moved here from California in 1971, when there were only 3 million people living in Israel. Back at that time, this desert was even more barren than today. Uh, actually, I was the first person in Israel to plant medjool. No way. Yeah, that 1974. Is Back in the 70s, she moved to Kibbutz Ketura and founded the Center for Sustainable Agriculture at the Arva Institute. And a few years ago, she received the Ben Gurion Prize for development of the Negev. Okay, you can see the Argania orchard we just planted. The next orchard we're planting is going to be frankincense. Her work covers a wide range of subjects, from the study of endangered medicinal herbs to the search for plants that can be grown in hostile desert conditions. Here, I'd like to show you the rarest tree in Israel. It's the Ficus pseudosicomorus, which is a kind of a wild fig, and I happen to have about seven of them. In fact, she has an entire garden full of biblical plants such as the palm of Gilead, myrrh, frankincense, smokewood, date palms, rare doom palms, acacia trees, white mulberry, dark mulberry, and many, many others. I gotta say, this is the collection of the most interesting trees. Wow. But what she is most famous for is the resurrection of the Judean date palm. This is awesome. What prompted you, like, from the beginning to start this, like, well, with the seeds actually, and everything? I did not believe anything was going to work. Uh -huh. Dr. Salone from Hadassah Hospital said, a person has sprouted an ancient seed, a lotus seed, from Thailand. We have plenty of old seeds all over the place, all over the archaeological sites. Why can't we do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say we take a fruit and then we extract the seeds out of that fruit and then we store these seeds in some cool, dry place, kind of a scientifically speaking, in perfect conditions. How long would these seeds stay viable? Well, according to science, majority of the seeds can survive a year to three years of storage. In fact, some seeds, like tomato seeds, have been known to germinate even after as long as 16 years. But what if I store them for like a thousand years? Some of the common, some of people are skeptical and they, 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 one of the most common skeptical questions I get is, wouldn't the seed be dead after 2000 years? How's it? We thought so. 
As a matter of fact, I was absolutely positive nothing was going to come out of this project. So we did some digging and we found this article from 1995, written by a group of biologists who were able to get a 1300-year-old lotus seed to sprout. So that means that resurrection of an ancient seed is not only possible theoretically, but also practically. And it's not the first time this is being done. It is possible, okay? So obviously everybody doubted, but it's possible it happened. But the second skeptical thing was, well, what if somebody, without someone else knowing, changed the seed and put like some kind of modern seed? But I thought that's easy to confirm by DNA testing. Sure. And you guys have done DNA testing. Well, look, after the seed sprouted, uh, I had to repot the little tree several times because it was growing very quickly. So I took the seed coat and we sent it for DNA testing and radiocarbon testing. And this confirmed that they were ancient. Unbelievable. And it's not just any ancient, but the analysis of that seed came back dating to AD 30. Yeah, really quite amazing. Like I said, I didn't really believe this was going to happen. <laughs> okay, if you're like me, you might be thinking, wait a second, carbon dating is not always accurate. And that might be true, and there's a lot of research that says that carbon dating may be inaccurate. However, carbon dating works quite well on younger objects, and it can be even more reliable if we take the archaeological surrounding context into account. These were found in the archaeological digs. Methuselah seed was found in Masada, underneath a lot of levels of rubble. So the fact that those seeds were found in an archaeological dig in the midst of other artifacts, artifacts that can be dated just by plain sight, such as the Roman mosaics, inscriptions, oil lamps, certain architectural construction style. Well, taking all that into account where the seeds were found makes the dating of AD 30 much more reliable. I must tell you that the only seeds I have ever been able to sprout have been for the Dead Sea area. Okay. There's something about that th those 300 extra meters of atmosphere or yeah. something that's good for seed longevity. Okay. I have not managed to sprout anything else, and I've tried. Okay. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. So The fact that those seeds stay preserved for 2,000 years is kind of miraculous. But that doesn't mean that it was easy to get them to sprout. So Rhoda and I have actually done a video about this project back in 2019. But the problem back then was that the seed that sprouted produced a male tree. And male trees, they don't give fruit. But something happened the year after. So I remember doing this a few years ago that that tree over there is a male, right, Methuselah? Yeah. yeah. So I remember reading that because you only had the male tree back at the time and male trees can't produce dates on their own but I understand that some kind of miracle happened and that's not necessary. Yes, we actually got one female tree, who's Hana. Hana. They planted more ancient seeds and an actual female tree sprouted, which means now they can take the pollen from the male tree, pollinate the female tree, and they will have actual Judean dates. And that is super exciting because in 2020, the tree actually produced the first Batch. And so <laughs> pollen from the Methuselah plus Hannah will produce dates. dates. Produce the dates of the time. And yeah. so do you guys already have produce of the dates, actual dates? Yes, I do. Is it possible to, do you have them actually here to see the dates, how they look like? Uh, yeah, well, actually we have some kind of rejects that we kept if you'd like to taste them. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> We've been waiting four years for this moment and the time has finally arrived to taste the dates. Okay, let's go into my messy office. Okay, these are kind of rejects, but they still taste good. Pick one. Oh my goodness, those are delicious. They are. They They're are not as sweet, but they are sweet. They taste like honey. I can't believe I forgot about to eat oh my a date that was resurrected from 2,000 years ago. This is amazing. Okay. Aren't they delicious? Okay. Doctor, this is the best date I've ever had. Because I, I'm okay with dates, but usually they're a bit too sweet for me. Yeah, that's true. This is amazing. This is like the perfect date. It's not too sweet. It's, it's sweet. Balance. It's perfect. Yeah. It is. 
Okay. <laughs> we might have been a little bit too excited there, but just think about it for a moment. The last time the mother tree of this date has seen the light of day was AD 30. I had goosebumps in this, this is amazing. I can't oh. believe we just had ancient dates amazing. and they are delicious. Yeah, they really are. Try. Just eat it. Put it in your mouth and chew. <laughs> How does it taste? So it is possible that our opinions on how good this thing tastes is a bit biased. And for obvious reasons, I mean, it's a known thing that taste buds can be affected by our perception. They taste wonderful. This is the best tasting date I've Dang. had. I mean, we're so excited about the whole thing that maybe it messed up our ability to judge the flavor. Because yeah. I love dates, but they're just a bit too sweet for me. Yeah. Like you said, I'll have one, that's about it. This, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. We gotta I, buy it. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. And that is exactly why we need to conduct a blind tasting experiment. We went to the local store in Galilee and purchased an additional seven varieties of dates. Some of these varieties are amongst the most common and famous dates in the world, including the king of them all, the Majul date. So now that we have the special Judean date and the seven other varieties, we cut them into small bite-sized pieces, placed them into number cups and wrote the name of the variety at the bottom. The participants will blindly taste each date until they make their choice and then they can pick up the cup and read out the name of their favorite one. Okay, so you know the, uh, the rules, just pick one after the other and tell us what you think. And then in the end, just tell us what you like the most. All right, All let's right. go. Let's try number one. Okay, so I'll go for the first one. I'm not looking. It's a little crunchier than what the dates I usually eat are. It's a firmer date. It's good, not so sweet. It's got some crunch to it. I enjoyed number one. I'll go for the second one. Oh, I really like them. <laughs> Okay, much softer texture, which I actually like that. Still firm. Honestly, it tastes a lot like number one. I, I, I like the taste. It's not so sweet. This one was a little bit sweeter than this one, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Similar taste though, like, but look, I like the texture. So far, they've tasted the first two dates, but they have no idea that the next one they're about to taste is the resurrected Judean date. Alright. Alright, number three. Sure. Alright. Oh, that one's soft. Mmm. This one is so. Wow. Yeah, they're getting softer as I go. <laughs> like, so number three is a lot softer. Oh, that one's soft. Squishy. It melted, it just melted in my mouth. It was, wow. More sweet though. So far I like this one. This is looking really good for the Judean date because out of the first three, it seems like they like this one the most. And Gabriel's reaction was very similar to what Rora and I experienced when we first tried this date, except that he has no idea that this is the Judean date. But there are more dates to try, so everything can still change. Okay, so you're gonna taste each one. You have water if you wanna kinda like refresh your mouth with a taste. Okay. And then you're gonna choose one of those. Okay. All right, moving on to number four. Number four now? Mm-hmm. This is very, very silky. Really good, it's sweet. It's the kind of thing I'd sit down and eat a whole bowl full of them. Winner. That was a good one. I don't know if they just are getting better and better with each one that I eat, but that one was, that's really good. I like the consistency of that one. I like when they're soft like that. Almost like melts in your mouth, sort of, kind of date. Feels super sweet. I like even the sweetness. It's sweeter, I think, than the third one. And this brings us to an important point. The rest of the dates are much, much sweeter than the first three. They're all kind of same level of sweetness. Mm -hmm. Flavor, sweetness, and 
consistency. This is really soft. I don't even have to pick it up today. This is very soft. Very sweet flavor to it. Feels super sweet. That one's sweet. It reminds me of a raisin almost, but not quite as dried out. So far, the strongest flavor is the six. So for those with a sweeter tooth, it was much more difficult to decide between them and choose the one that would be better than the other. It's kind of hard to decide because even seven like started melting, seven kind of the same. Like five, six, and seven, I like the texture the absolute best out of them, but I don't know. I'm trying to figure out which one I like the best out of those. So, so far, three and eight would be my favorites. Okay, now that all of the participants have tasted all of the dates, it is finally time to reveal the results. All right, you're right now in Israel. You're in a in a shop, uh, and your flight back is leaving tonight. And you need to take one box. You only have enough budget for one box of dates. You're taking it with you for yourself. Which number will you choose? Of all of them? Yeah. Oh, man. Which one did I like the most? And so, if you were to oh. choose one to take with you to Israel, which one would it be? A it's box so of hard oh, a box, yeah. Um, Maybe like number three. I think number three is probably the one that I prefer the most. Number three you prefer the most? Number three. If you were to take yeah. a box from Israel for your family. Yeah, I think it was number three. That would be the one. Well, that's insane. Because that's the Judean date. Is it really? <laughs> wow. Holy cow, I, I have expensive taste. <laughs> okay, okay, this is kind of unbelievable. Just think about this for a second. Okay, far as we know, this is the world's first ever conducted blind tasting of dates that includes the ancient resurrected Judean date. And the first participant in this experiment chooses the ancient Judean date. He chose number three. Chose number three. Number three. See what number three what is. Number three is? Okay. It's the expensive thing. <laughs> you want the expensive, the expensive thing? thing. <laughs> really? So now, which one would you take a box home with you from Israel if you were to buy any yep. of those eggs? I probably would say number six was probably my favorite. Like five, six, and seven, I like the texture the absolute best out of them, but probably tastes probably number six. Okay. Which one is six? Halloween. Hallow Halloween. 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 Okay. I've never heard of that one. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so, so far we have one for the resurrected Judean date and we have one for Halawi. But there are six more people who did not choose yet. So let's see what they have to say. Take a look at number that you chose okay. on the bottom of it. What does it say? Dairy. Oh, that's amazing. Check what it is. That's Majul. <laughs> Which one would you Probably the last one. The last one. Yeah. Okay. This is the Majul date. So. Wow, that's interesting. I would go with this one. Halawi. We are down to our last two participants. But before we see what they choose, let's review the scoreboard. Okay, so now leading the pack, we've got the Halawi and the Majul dates, both shining with two points each. Following their lead is the delightful dairy date with one point and the resurrected Judean date with a single point. And now we're beginning to see a very interesting picture here. These three dates, so they got most of the votes, are actually the sweetest dates we have on this entire list. So could it be that sweetness is actually winning? Well, the tasting's not over yet, and we still have two more participants to cast their votes. So, so far, three and eight would be my favorites. I think, and I said I wasn't gonna do this, but I think I like number six the most. Number seven would be comparable to Awesome. And so if you were to choose one to take with you to Israel, which one would it be? Wow, that's it's so though. hard. Oh, a box, yeah. Um, well, I think I'll have three. Yeah, I'll go for three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know why I'm so excited because of this. Is the Judean date? There you go. <laughs> this is amazing. Couldn't ask for a better scoreboard. Carol, that one did I say earlier? So, uh, I can't believe it. Me neither. 
I think at this point it's important to know that we're in no way affiliated with the farmers, this company, the organization, the institute, or these ancient dates. This is surreal because yeah, it is what surreal are the chances? Sounds like, yeah. In fact, all of the ancient Judean dates we're tasting here in this video, we had to buy ourselves. Nobody paid us, we don't have any sponsors. This is just honest feedback. We're interested to find out if this is good as much as you are. Oh, so I'm looking forward then for more fruits like ancient Judean dates. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so we got one more participant to cast their vote, and this could go either way. It's very good, but I think I like number six the most out of all of them. That's my personal favorite. Okay, that's really cool. Okay, so open up number six, see the bottom of it. What does it okay. say? Dory? Dairy. Oh, dairy. Dairy date. Oh, wow. So you are the last person to taste all these. And so far, all the people, they, those who like sweet, have chosen either the Halloween or the Majul. Ah, so gotcha. you got those who don't like sweet, chose the Judean date in Israel. This is quite incredible. It really is a pattern where these three dates are the sweetest dates on this list. So if you were to choose between the less sweet dates, the Judean is the clear winner. But if you are leaning more towards a sweeter date, like the Halloween Dairy or the Majul, they're all kind of pretty good. They, those who like sweet have chosen either the Halloween or the Majul. Okay. Uh, I chose this, obviously, and well, that's some people you and go, I are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and other people are like, maybe this, but they went with the Majul in the end, and other people with the sweet tooth. Yeah, there's went no with maybe the about it. When I Halloween. tasted that, I just decided yeah. that's it's so that's unusual. Great. It's very unusual. Okay, so there is actually another variety of dates that's called the Ashwa dates, and it comes directly from Saudi Arabia. And they're also a premium date, quite expensive, about $40 a kilogram. And unfortunately, we couldn't get them on time for the blind experiment, but we did get them now and we tasted them and they're very similar to the Majul date in flavor, which again, wouldn't stack up properly against the Judean date because they're just so different in nature. They're so much sweeter. And so we didn't think they're going to change the final outcome of how many people will choose the Judean date or how many will not. However, there is something else that might have influenced the results. Okay. Now, which one is the uh, so, Judean? So the Judean date is number three. Okay. This is Judean date. Okay. And here's the problem with the Judean date so far. It's that uh, we froze it twice. Oh, that'll, so that it, will change it. Okay, at this point, we realize we've made a big mistake. Because these people, the last five people who tasted the date, they're in Florida. And when we arrived here, we placed the date into the freezer thinking we're going to preserve it. But we've completely forgotten that the date was already frozen in Israel. On the way here it unfroze and now we're refreezing it again. And it's a kind of a known thing that if you refreeze food, it may change the texture and even the flavor. And that's exactly what happened here. When we saw the reaction of when they were tasting the Judean date and they all said, hmm, that's a weird texture, we realized something is wrong. So we went ahead and tried it ourselves and sure enough, it did not taste the same as it did when we tried it in Israel. When you said, hey, it tastes good, but the consistency wasn't there, my thought went to, it's been refrozen twice. It unfroze when we traveled here and it froze again here and now it unfroze a second time. What happens when you freeze and unfreeze stuff? They change uh, consistency. Consistency change, yep. They become yep. softer and muggier. So if we were to discard those last five tastings, then the results would be two to one. Two Juden date and one for the Halloween date. Yeah. I, I think there's no other option but to wait until they can grow them. Mass produce. Produce them. so they can deliver them here in a special way. Unfortunately, we don't have more of this ancient Judean date, so we can't redo the experiment. But the fact that Judean date was chosen two times, it is absolutely mind-blowing. I'm so happy to have uh, been part of this uh, blind tasting of uh, dates. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for taking part. And <laughs> I can't believe it. This is so cool. Me neither, but uh, yeah. So here's the conclusion of these tests. The last five results is gotta be taken with a grain of salt because they did not taste the same exact date fruit as we did in Israel because it was refrozen twice. However, the first group of people tasted the Judean dates in its proper form. And the fact that two out of the first three people have actually chosen the Judean date, they've chosen it even over the king of the dates, the Majul date, which is quite phenomenal. 
In the end, this experiment doesn't have enough data to make any claims. This really is just the first steps of seeing if there is anything here in the flavor profile that is worthy of mentioning. And there sure is. It just feels like the ancient Judean date is the perfect balance between sweetness and that mm, melting and it's just awesome. So yeah, Judean dates. So the big question is, is it worth the price? This is it. So they sell three dates in this little box. It's 149 shekels for three dates. That's the most expensive date that we'll ever have. Well, this box here, it's not really a real price for dates. This is more of a novelty item right now. You get only three of them in there and the money you pay for this kind of goes more to support what they're doing this project. It's gonna take about an, another eight years before we have a large amount of fruit. I'm surprised we have any fruit at all. <laughs> And once they have a field of these dates, a whole produce, then the price is gonna be way more similar to what we see for other premium dates on the market. And at that point, this is probably going to be our favorite date to buy. Hey guys, on a separate note, we're looking to hire a video editor, somebody who can help make us these videos more frequently. So if you are a video editor or if you know somebody who would enjoy working on content like this, please send them the link snrisrael.com slash apply. We've listed all the qualifications that we think are necessary for this paid position. We can't wait to see who will apply. So please, if you know somebody, forward this link to them, snrisrael.com slash apply. So we're so thankful and honored that we were able to meet you and learn about all this project. It's just so wonderful. We're just, I think... Well, I'm very pleased that people are interested yeah. because it's kind of important. I believe the majority of our viewers are so interested in the Bible and the diets in the Bible, the fruits in the Bible. And so this to them is such, such a huge topic and so important that something from so long ago is revived into what it is today. And I think everybody's excited to get their hands on some dates in the future. Well, I, I really hope that... Uh, We'll have an orchard and be able to supply them because they're really quite good. Yeah. If they had tasted terrible, I would have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, Joy, what's your conclusion of all this? That first of all, ancient dates taste so much better <laughs> than the ones we eat right now, and I'm going to buy her products today. <laughs> Yeah. Care <laughs> products. <laughs> Joey cares for her body and soul. Yeah. <laughs> Very wise. Very yeah. wise. I wonder if I need some hair products. We'll just keep that cap on. <laughs> yeah, keep it on. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time. And the best is yet to come. Amen. <laughs>